Since releasing my videos on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon as well as the P1S, I've seen a number of questions about how to use TPU in these printers. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process that I use for printing with TPU. I'm gonna show you how it's actually done and walk you through some of the configuration that you may need to do as well. Now, just to be clear, I'm using the latest Bamboo Lab slicer as well as firmware for this video. There are some changes that were made that would mean the process is actually slightly different on the older versions so you do want to make sure that you do have the latest firmware available on your printer anyway let's get on with it and let's take a look at what you actually have to do on the printer itself first of all now the first thing to understand is all of these printers are direct drive printers you can see the extruder in there and as a result of that they are all absolutely capable of printing tpu whether that be bamboo lab tpu or something like this sane smart the thing to understand though is whilst they can print they cannot do it via the ams module you cannot put tpu in here because the way this actually works is there is your motors in here that actually pull the filament through and push it down to the extruder inside and that extruder then pushes it down into the hot end as a result of the motors in here if you try to put flexibles in it will tangle up and you won't be able to do it so the way you actually need to print flexible filaments on these printers is disconnect the ams and we'll take a look at that in a minute and then put it on the spool holder on the back and put it then directly into the extruder now the process for this is exactly the same on the p1s p1p as it is on the x1 carbon if you're someone though who doesn't have the ams modules then this is exactly exactly the same as printing any other filament you just go directly on the back now the downside to not being able to use the AMS is obviously that you can't do multi-material prints with it so you couldn't do different colors on a single print or at least you could but you'd have to do it manually and you can't do multi-material via the AMS either again you could do these things you would just have to handle the switch over manually yourself Spinning one of them around, we've turned around the P1S, you can see we've got our spool holder mounted on the back. Now this does come in the box with these printers, you may not have actually fitted it if you fitted the AMS, however you are going to need that fitted or at least something to hold the spool externally if you're not going to be using that. So what we're going to need to do is disconnect the piping for the standard filament from the AMS and then plumb in the filament manually. In the past, you also had to disconnect the cable connection to the AMS module as well, because in previous versions of the software for this printer, it wasn't able to see that there was external filament with the AMS connected. However, in the newer versions of Bamboo Slicer, there is now an option for an external filament, so you don't actually have to disconnect the AMS module itself. You simply have to unplumb it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is disconnect our PTFE tube here to do that we simply push in the connection and release it then we're going to take our external filament spool place it on the holder and then we're simply going to push that through until it reaches the extruder now i would usually at this point put back on a very short piece of ptfe tubing just to avoid wear on the connector there but there is also another mod that you can do on this with an adapter like this this is one that's 3d printed you can actually get this on thingiverse and other places and this actually allows you to have a dual y input to the printer so you then have your normal ptfe tube going in here for instance you'd have that there and then it would allow you to put in external filament if you wanted to i have actually tried this and i had one or two issues so i'm going to do another print again but this time i'm going to get it with the nut inserts rather than the pushing inserts and i think it would absolutely be fine but you don't need this you can simply do it the manual way and again once we're ready to go we simply then feed it down until we reach the extruder the point where it will go no more and then what we're going to need to do is go around the other side and tell it to start feeding it through the hot end. We're then gonna come around the front, go into our menu, go down to feeding, and we're then gonna select the load option. And that then will begin the process of heating up the hot end, then feeding the filament through. What you might need to do at this point to start it off once it starts to actually do the feed you may need to just reach around the back and give your filament a bit of a push so it starts to get picked up by the extruder and then it will start feeding it through 
Once you've got it extruding, you then go into Bamboo Lab Studio, go under your device, and here you will see our area where it shows the AMS module, but also the external spool option now listed here. Now, this option was only recently added in firmware and software, so if you don't currently have this, you want to make sure that you have updated the firmware on your printer as well as the Bamboo Studio software. So for this, what we're going to do is choose the type of filament that this is. Now this is Sane Smart TPU, but we're going to choose generic TPU for this one. That way we're not going to have any issues. We're then going to select the color. Color is black. We're then going to click confirm and then that is listed there. Moving into the prepare screen, I've got a model on the build plate ready to go. Now, the way it actually works in here with the external spool is a little bit confusing. You don't actually select it until you're ready to send it to the printer. So what we're going to need to do, first of all, is synchronize our AMS. You'll note, though, that that external spool that we have under devices, so if I just go back here under TPU, that is not actually shown. What we're going to do now is add in one of the empty slots of the AMS the TPU option simply to allow us to slice the file the right way. So I'm going to just pick plus. It adds in number four and from that I'm going to select generic TPU. If you don't have generic TPU on this list you can simply click the add remove filament and then select the option from there. What I'm then going to do is select that for our print. So we're going to click on the print then select the filament that we want to use and we're going to say filament 4. Once you've selected the TPU you have all the usual options down here for layer height and obviously that affects speed. However, I'm not using these. I'm using a profile that I was sent which has been tuned specifically for the likes of Sane Smart TPU. It's had a little bit of tweaking from me as well and that's set to 0.2 millimeter and that is giving me some really good results and I'm going to put a link to that profile in the description of this video if you want to use it and then we're going to slice. At this point, you would slice it the normal way. You'd put any support on on any other changes you want before moving forward. What we're then going to do is click print plate, but this is the point where we select what we want the printer to do. If you look down the bottom here, you can see the enable AMS option is ticked. And because we're not going to be doing that, we want to untick it. Then you will see that the option for the filament has now changed to TPU and then we have the option to send it to the printer and then it will start to print from that external spool. Once that's done, it's then simply a case of letting the printer do its thing. Now, just to show you how a print has come out, this is a DJI Action 2 mount for the GoPro fitment. And this was printed with that spool of TPU that I showed you. Now, this is some bobbling as a result of the wetness of the filament. That spool that I fitted on you saw earlier on is really old. It's really quite wet. It's one I've just left around the sides. If I dry it, it's absolutely fine. I just didn't have a chance to do it before making this bit of the video. The overall TPU prints on on these printers do come out very very well I have showed that in other videos before just to show you some other things here is actually a benchy I printed in TPU just to prove that it is TPU I will bend it there so you can see again this was actually printed with that same spool again you've seen a little bit of stringing but overall it's actually come out really really well and here is a GoPro mount printed on it too these were both actually on the X1 not the P1S but the overall results from these printers are all exactly the same both absolutely capable of producing nice TPU prints now, just as a bit of a tester, I did another print live on the channel on my Sunday stream just to demonstrate how easy it is to print TPU on this printer. We opened up a brand new spool live on air, put it in the printer and then simply selected the standard profiles and told it to print. 
We printed a brand new fresh GoPro mount. This is the AOS one off one of Chris's quads. And here you can see overall it's come out fantastic. I used the standard bamboo TPU profile for this, not my own one. And other than a few very, very fine wisps here, you can see it has come out absolutely fantastic on the P1S with zero complaints at all. So that's the overall process for printing TPU on the Bamboo Lab printers, whether it be the X1 or the P series, all are exactly the same. Now, if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions, please do put them in there as well. Now, I do actually have a full review on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and I have a review of the P1S coming up, but I do have an overview video of that here as well, and I'll put a link to both of them in the description. Furthermore, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future there are links to these bamboo printers in the description and there's also links to my patreon there as well i want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons i would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support and if you're interested in supporting us in the future too please do consider checking it out anyway that's it from me on this one please do let me know what you think in the comment section stay safe i'll speak to you soon